Worldwide, amphibians are in danger. Perhaps more than any other group. Ordinarily, we'd lose one species of frog or toad every 200 years. But right now, it's 45,000 times faster than that. 40% of all amphibians across the world are listed as threatened. Frogs, toads and salamanders are particularly susceptible to shifts in temperature and the loss of waterways. But it may have been the popularity of a pregnancy test that led to their sharpest decline. Yes, a pregnancy test. In the 1930s, a scientist developed a rudimentary test which involved injecting a woman's urine into the African clawed frog. If the woman was pregnant, it triggered a hormone reaction in the frogs and they released a clutch of eggs. It was kind of icky, but surprisingly reliable. In fact, the tests were so accurate and the frogs so common, they were exported around the world by the thousands. For decades, they became a model organism for scientific study, kind of like the white lab rat for amphibians. The African clawed frogs have been used to win Nobel prizes, flown into space, cloned, and even had their stem cells merged with robots to create living machines. But along with all that research, they also carried something far more dangerous. So dangerous, it has put all amphibians around the world at risk. Batrachochytrium dendrobiditis, or BD, is a chytrid fungus. It is highly infectious and deadly, destroying skin and triggering heart attacks in frogs and salamanders. BD has driven the decline of at least 500 amphibian species, or about one in every 16. 90 have gone extinct or are presumed extinct, and another 124 have declined by more than 90%. BD could not have crossed oceans on its own. It arrived with invasive species like African clawed frogs, American bullfrogs and cane toads that are unaffected by the fungus. The first local transmission of chytrid fungus was discovered around southern Queensland and northern New South Wales in the 1970s, when frog numbers dropped dramatically. This continued into the beginning of the next decade, and it wasn't long before the southern day frog was declared extinct. By 1981, the southern gastric brooding frog, one of the world's most unique amphibian species, disappeared. By the mid-80s, the fungus had reached the coast of central Queensland, and the northern gastric brooding frog was marked extinct. In the early 90s, just a decade after it was first discovered, the fungus had reached waterways in the far north. At the same time, it was carried south, through New South Wales to Victoria, onto Tasmania by the 2000s, and more recently, further west to parts of South Australia. It even made its way upstream to the country's highest peaks, destroying native frog populations as it spread. One of those frogs pushed to the very brink is the iconic corroboree frog. Back in the late 60s and early 70s, a researcher by the name of Ross Pengilly, he actually did a study estimating the biomass of, of crubbery frogs in the subalpine and, and high montane environment. And he actually estimated that crubbery frogs constituted the, the greatest vertebrate biomass in this system. So if you were to get all the crubbery frogs, put them into a big ball, the ball would be bigger than if you made a ball of wombats or a ball of swamp wallabies. There were just so many crubbery frogs in this system and undoubtedly they were playing a key role in the ecosystem function of the system. That once giant ball of frog is now listed as critically endangered with as few as 50 southern corroboree frogs left in the wild. Put simply, without conservation efforts, these frogs would be extinct. Every stage of the frog's life cycle is being tightly controlled to limit the exposure to chytrid and maintain a healthy breeding population. 
the same reaction that caused frogs to be an effective pregnancy test is being used to collect eggs in the lab. Tadpoles are hatched and reared in carefully quarantined breeding programs, then brought here to specialty enclosures in the Southern Alps to be released. Boosting the chances that juveniles will reach mating age in the wild. And what we're aiming to do is keep these populations persistent so that way they can continue to remain here in enough numbers to keep breeding and ticking over and hopefully developing resistance to the chytrid fungus over time. But time might be running out. From July 2021, reports started coming in of dead frogs on a massive scale. It's absolutely unprecedented. We've had over 1,500 mass mortality events reported to us. So that's not just 1,500 dead frogs, it's 1,500 mass mortalities. The precise cause of this sudden outbreak is still unclear. But what is obvious is the threat to a whole class of animals that is already pushed to the brink. Amphibians are really important to us. They actually form a really high proportion of the vertebrate biomass in almost all of the ecosystems across Australia. So if we lose those, they're likely to be cascading impacts across food webs. The things that frogs eat, the things that are eaten by frogs. And we don't often think about it, but those kinds of changes can have impacts on our fruit and veg production, sheep and beef production, and the environments that we like to walk through on the weekends, where there may be untold environmental damage.